what do these bar graphs have on them? They have information, right? What can you use this information for? Anthony. Yeah, to make another graph. Or it's a simple way to gather our thoughts, right? Maybe you were uh, working at a restaurant like Mr. Trance said, right? And for the day, you sold 25 steaks, and you, stole, you sold uh, 20 pieces of chicken, and you sold 30 fish. And what if my boss came up to me and said, hey, I want to know the percent of fish that you sold that day? How would I figure that out? I'd probably calculate a sales report that might be shown like this in a bar graph, or maybe it would be in the form of a pie chart, but then I would actually have to calculate the percent. And how do we calculate percent? Gary? Uh, estimation sometimes. Okay. But if I gave you the decimal, how would you calculate the percent? Decimal into a percent. Yeah. And if I gave you the fraction, how would you calculate the percent? Turn the fraction into a decimal, then the decimal into a percent. Exactly. So to figure out a percent, we have to figure out the decimal. And to figure out the decimal, we have to figure out the fraction. If that makes sense to you, thumbs up. If you're not quite sure what we just discovered, thumbs to the side. Alex, do you understand? Yeah. Jennifer, Martino? Okay. So this is something that we've been covering for the past couple days, actually. We've been following these rules to reach the percent. So now we're going to continue to do it a little bit more. So for the first problem here, there's a guided practice sheet, and there's both a pie chart and a bar graph. So if I give you both a pie chart and a bar, a bar graph, what do you think you have to do first? You have to read the, by, the bar graph for the pie chart, right? You're welcome. So if you look at these bar graphs or pie charts, what do you know already just by looking at them? They look the same? What else do you know about them? We did this before. You did it before? Yeah, you did, but what else do you know? Do you know the number of tickets sold in Florida if you look at this bar graph? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you know the number of tickets sold in Hawaii if you look at it? Yeah. How do you know that? Yeah, it says it, yeah. What else do you know by looking at just the bar graph? Not the pie chart, but just the bar graph. What would you know? Anthony. It has states. It has what? States. What do you mean by that? Oh, states. Yeah, it has states. Sure. What would we have to do to figure out the number of tickets sold for these four states? Stephanie. Add them up. Yeah. So if we added up 160, 220, 80, and 40, what number did we come up with? You should be writing it down on your guided practice sheet to figure it out. So we're going to add up 160 plus 220 plus 80 plus 40. So what's 160 plus 220 plus 80 plus 40? Four hundred ninety. Why do you think it's four hundred ninety? So if we add eighty plus forty, what's that? Eighty five hundred. Five hundred. Yes, exactly. So just looking at this bar graph, we know that five hundred tickets were sold. If I showed this information in a pie chart, what could you tell about a pie chart? There's something that we learned a few days ago that's always true about a pie graph. So we know it's a big circle, right? What does that circle always represent? 
Some of you, I submitted your bar graphs and pie charts back, and I said that your numbers didn't equal something. What number was that on your pie graphs? 100. 100 what? 100%. Why do you think it's 100%? Gary? Uh, it's 100% because the whole thing is like 100% circle. So then you were cutting it into uh, pieces, which was taking percents out of 100%. Exactly, yeah. So if you look at a pie graph, it's always a whole. It's a whole number, 100%. Okay. So for the second step, we have to determine if it's a bar graph or a pie chart. How can we do that? Does this look like it's a bar graph or a pie chart? Pie chart. Pie chart? Does our pie chart have numbers on it? No. no. So it doesn't have any numbers on it. How do we know if it's a pie chart then? It's not accurate, is it? No. If I didn't show you this bar graph, would you be able to tell anything about the number of tickets sold? No. no. Other than that, this whole circle here equals 100%, right? But if I show you this, the bar graph, you can tell some information. So Miriam, just looking at the bar graph on the screen, what could you tell me? What can you tell me about California? Alvaro, do you want to help Miriam out? Yeah. So Miriam, what could you tell me about Colorado? Yeah. And Chris, what can you tell me about Hawaii? It sells 40 tickets. 40 tickets, yes. So do you think we're looking at the bar graph here or the pie chart? I hear one answer for pie chart, one answer for bar graph. Do you think pie chart? Why do you think pie chart? Is there any information in our pie chart on there? Yeah. What information is on there? The states. Is that helpful? No. No. So we're going to be looking at the bar graph first. Right. Because our bar graph has information. So how are we going to convert this data in the bar graph into a fraction? How do we figure out fractions? If we know 500 tickets are sold, and we want to convert this into a fraction, how do we do that? Gary. Uh, since there's four places, fraction form four over 500? Four over 500? Yes. For which state? No, I'm saying all states. All states combined? Yes. Okay. But the question asks, what would be the percentages for each state above? So how are we going to figure out our four fractions for Florida, California, Colorado, and Hawaii? Kiara, do you have any idea? Add the numbers. So we added the numbers of all the tickets sold, right? So the number of tickets sold is going to be our denominator. So is the denominator the top or the bottom number? The bottom. Yes, very good, Alvaro. So 500. So if I want to know how many tickets were sold in Florida, I look at my bar graph and it says how many tickets were sold, Jennifer? In Florida, how many tickets were sold? Yeah. So that is our fraction, 160 over 500. So what do you think the fraction for the tickets sold in California is? Chris? 220 out of 500. Yeah. And why do you think that? Because there's 220 tickets sold in California, and if 
Stephanie, what do you think the fraction is for tickets sold in Colorado? 80 over 500. 80 over 500? And why do you say that? Because 50 is the total of all the tickets sold, and 80 is the total of how many tickets Colorado sold. Perfect. So, Ivana, what would be the fraction for Hawaii? 40 out of 500. 40 out of 500. Awesome. So, just looking at these fractions on the screen, are these reduced to their lowest terms? No, exactly. So what are we going to do? Are we going to convert these right away into a decimal, or are we going to reduce them? Reduce them. Reduce them. Excellent. So take the next minute and reduce these fractions to their lowest terms. Once you've reduced them to their lowest terms, raise your hand. We'll check them. And if you're right, we'll award you five dollars each. Each right for getting them all right.